In this video, we're going to continue discussing properties of power series. Specifically, we're going to look at how we can combine power series. Um, so there's several ways that we can combine power series um, in order to define new functions. So we have three properties that we're going to discuss. So first, suppose that I have two different um, convergent power series. So I have some power series with a sum of ckx to the k that converges to some function um, f of x, and a power series, a sum of dkx to the k um, that converges to some power series g of x. Then, because those two power series are convergent, um, the sum of the ck plus or minus dk x to the k would converge to f of x plus or minus g of x. This is saying that if I have um, convergent power series, then the sum of this uh, plus or minus part of those coefficients can be broken up into the sum of the first power series plus or minus the sum of that second power series. So if this first one is converging to f and the second one to g, then the sum where they're combined like that still converges to f of x um, plus or minus g of x. Um, I can also um, multiply a power series um, by some power of x and bring that inside the sum. So I can have a sum of x to the m times some sum of ckx to the k, and that's going to become a sum of ckx to the k plus um, m. Remember with exponent rules, this is the sum of ckx to the k times x to the m. So this is saying I can pull that x to the m out in front. I can factor it the way I would, I would factor just a normal polynomial um, because I have a convergent power series. Um, so I can treat it like I would um, up a uh, polynomial that just had a finite number of terms. This is an infinite series, but it does converge, so we can um, use the same kind of properties that we would have with a, with a regular polynomial. This is also saying that um, the convergence of this, this power series where I was factoring out that x to the m would converge to x to the m times f of x if this part here was converging to f of x. Um, for everything that, that is not, for all values that are not the, the center, this the series here is centered at zero, and then we have to be a little bit more careful about what happens at zero, and just say this series would converge to the limit as x goes to zero of that x to the m f of x. Um, but this is pretty powerful that we can um, do this kind of factoring and pull uh, powers of x in and out of our power series. Um, the last property that we have has to do with composition of functions that I can actually um, compose things with my power series. So if I have some h of x that equals this b x to the m, um, then I can take that h of x and plug it in for my x that I had in some power series, the sum of ck x to the k, and that's going to converge to the composition of the functions f and h, um, as long as we're still talking about values of h that are in the, the interval on which um, the power series that converged to x was, was converging. So we can talk about doing a composition of um, functions with our, with our power series. So we want to illustrate these properties um, in a few different examples. So for our first example, I have this nice um, geometric power series here. 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k. And we know that's equal, if I start plugging in my indices here, I've got 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. And that converges for the absolute value of x less than 1. So that power series is equal to 1 over 1 minus x um, for all values of um, x that are between strictly between negative 1 and 1. Okay. So we're asked to find the, um, the power series and interval of convergence for the function 1 over 1 plus x squared. So notice that and we're going to be using these, these different ways that we can manipulate power series. Notice that 1 over 1 plus x squared can be rewritten as 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. So my goal here was to try to use that I have this particular power series representation for 1 over 1 minus x, and I want to manipulate that power series using these properties of combining power series to create a power series for 1 over 1 plus x squared. So I notice that I can rewrite that 1 over 1 plus x squared as 1 over 1 minus negative x squared. So this is using composition. So I'm going to be replacing um, the x in 1 over 1 minus x by negative x squared. So I can write that as a sum from k equals 0 to infinity of negative x squared to the k. 
Okay, so we're doing exactly what it had here. I have some um, other function here, like, like an h of x, that I can replace by that um, x to the k within the power series. And then I can simplify this, or I can, I guess we'd call it expanding, but I can rewrite this um, in a way to show uh, what's going on a little bit more. So this negative x squared to the k, notice that that's like negative 1 times x squared to the k. So with exponent rules, that becomes negative 1 to the k x to the 2k. Okay, so it's useful to see that, that that's alternating. So I can say that this series that I have here, when I replaced my x with this negative x squared, um, that's still some like r to the k. So this converges by my geometric series test for the absolute value of negative x squared less than 1, Okay, which will be where squared is less than 1, or again, where the absolute value of x is less than 1. So to answer this question about the interval of convergence, here my interval of convergence is still from negative 1 to 1. Okay, so let's look at another example. So we were able to do some manipulations with composition there to get a power series representation for 1 over 1 plus x squared as this sum of negative 1 to the k, x to the 2k, and that converged to 1 over 1 plus x squared for all x between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so let's look at another one that we can, we can manipulate and try to find a power series representation for. Here I have x over 8 minus x cubed. So again, my goal is to try to rewrite this as maybe something times 1 over 1 minus something else here. Okay, trying to make it look like this 1 over 1 minus x that I know something about. So notice that we can rewrite this as x times 1 over 8 minus x cubed. So I have the 1 in the, the numerator now. What about that denominator? Well, I want it to look like 1 minus something. So I'm going to factor out that 8. So I have 8 times um, 1 minus x cubed over 8. Okay, so going a little bit further here. So I have x over 8 times 1 over 1 minus x cubed over 8. So now I'm doing two of the different um, properties of, of combining my power series. I have a composition with x cubed over 8 being substituted in for x, and I also have multiplication here by a power, and also multiplication by a constant. So that's also something that, that we can do. If we can multiply by a power, we can also multiply by, by some constant. So let's see what we're going to have for our power series representation now. So this is going to equal x over 8 times the sum from k equals 0 to infinity. We know 1 over 1 minus x was the sum of x to the k. So this is going to be um, the sum of x cubed over 8 to the k, replacing or substituting x by x cubed over 8. Okay. So if I wanted to be able to write that um, so it was a single sum here, I'd have this sum, I shouldn't say a single sum, I guess, just bringing all terms inside of, of that sum notation. Um, I'd have a sum from k equals 0 to infinity. This is going to be x to the 3k, and then when I would bring that x power on the outside in, that would be to the 3k plus 1. Similarly, this 8 to the k, when I multiply that times the 8 to the 1, I'm going to have 8 to the k plus 1. So I get that power series representation for x over 8 minus x cubed. So what about the question of convergence? Well, I have some um, x over 8 here times this this sum, um, the original thing converged, so this is still going to converge, still by the geometric series test, because we still have some uh, ratio here being raised to the k. So this is going to converge by our geometric series test for um, values of x cubed over 8 in absolute value less than 1, which means I have the absolute value of x cubed less than 8. Um, which will be true when the absolute value of x is less than 2. So here my interval of convergence is the interval from negative 2 to 2. Okay, so here um, our interval did change from what we had because of the different substitutions that we had. So x over 
8 minus x cubed, if I wanted to just like write this all in one place, um, is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the 3k plus 1 over 8 to the k plus 1 for the absolute value of x less than 2. So that's our, our final conclusion for that part. Okay, so we've done some composition and we've done some multiplying by a power of x in order to get some power series representations. So for the last example here, we're going to go a little bit the other direction. Instead of being given a function whose power series I want to find, I have a power series here and I want to try to use some, some manipulations in some way to figure out what function um, that power series is actually equal to. So we're trying to find the function represented by this power series using what we already know so far. So notice looking at this, this power series, I could rewrite it as a sum from k equals 0 to infinity um, of x squared to the k over 4 to the k, or in fact as a sum here of x squared over 4 to the k. So I recognize this power series as something that's geometric. So I know that the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k is equal to 1 over 1 minus x for the absolute value of x less than 1. So now I can say that this sum of k equals 0 to infinity of x squared over 4 to the k is equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared over 4. And then I can uh, simplify this a little bit. This will be 1 over 4 over 4 minus x squared over 4, or 4 over 4 minus x squared. And here my interval of convergence would come from the fact that this is going to converge for that radius, excuse me, that ratio for our absolute value of x squared over 4 less than 1. So it's that r is x squared over 4. So that'll be for the absolute value of x squared less than 4. Didn't really need the absolute value bars there on something that's squared. But that'll be true for the absolute value of x. Whoops less than 2. So here we've got um, our interval of convergence being from negative 2 to 2. Okay, so we can do these manipula manipulations in both directions.